Hi, welcome to Everyday Movie Recap. For today's video, we will recap a sci-fi thriller film called The Signal from year 2014. The plot revolves around three college students who think they have tracked a rival computer hacker to a shed in the Nevada desert, unaware of the living nightmare in store for them. Have you seen this movie yet? If not, grab some popcorn and enjoy. At the beginning of the movie, we are introduced to Jonah, Nick, and Haley, three students at MIT, who are traveling by car to California for their summer break. They are assisting Haley who is moving out and chose to spend a year living in a different state. She and her partner Nick both wonder what the future holds for their relationship. Haley opposes the separation that Nick and her have created because of his disability, which causes him to view himself as a burden. Even so, the three make an effort to enjoy themselves as much as possible while traveling, stopping to dine at different restaurants, see the aquarium, and even have Nick show a small child how to use the claw machine to earn a gift. Nick receives a message one evening from a hacker named Nomad, who the boys had previously played around with. However, once Nomad broke into the MIT systems, Nomad pins the blame on them which nearly resulted in their expulsion. Jonah is instantly awakened from his sleep by Nick, and the two of them use Nick's computer to access additional cryptic and insulting messages from Nomad. They respond by telling Nomad to watch his back as they plan to expose him. In response, Nomad sends a video he obtained by hacking their laptop showing them inside their room. Annoyed, the boys set to work immediately, monitoring Nomad's IP until they finally locate his address in Nevada. On their way there, Nomad emails them a photo of their vehicle that he obtained from a security camera. Haley panics and advises the boys to stop their pursuit of the guy. Jonah is disappointed in Nick who tells him he doesn't want to pursue Nomad because he would want to focus on Haley. Over a few days, the three make stops at every tourist attraction they come across. At their next stop, a gas station, Nick walks inside to get some coffee, and Haley seizes the opportunity to speak with Jonah alone. When she asks Jonah if Nick has commented on her choice to go, he simply replies that Nick is disappointed and stays out of their problems. Nick spills the coffee at that very moment, tripping and falling to the ground. Nick's friends run to his aid, but he insists he's okay and returns inside to fetch more coffee. Haley follows him and explains that she is trying to help not because he needs it, but only because she is being thoughtful of Nick's disability. However, Nick is still aloof. Shortly after, Nick tells Jonah that he's changed his mind and now wants to pursue Nomad. He searches for Haley after realizing she's disappeared and discovers her sitting on the ledge. Nick tells Haley that he will soon be in a wheelchair and that he is reluctant to hold her back since he knows she will figure out why he is breaking up with her. This bothers Haley because she believes they are more than just friends, and she throws away the necklace he gave her before heading back to the car. Returning to the road, Haley declares she wants to accompany the boys in their pursuit of Nomad. They finally arrive at Nomad's location, a rundown house in the middle of nowhere. The boys ask Haley to remain in the car as they go inside, ready to record everything with their camera. They start to question whether the IP was forged because there is literally nothing there, except for tons of unclean, broken furniture, an abandoned old car, and a broken chair outside next to the eerie tree. After entering the home further and discovering that he is by himself, Nick heads to the corner where Jonah is seated on a chair. Nick carefully approaches, but Jonah pulls a prank on him by turning around and frightening him. Afterward, the boys head to the basement and discover several dusty server tracks. As the group rushes outside to check on Haley, they hear her scream and realize that she has vanished, leaving the car open. Haley's panting is audible, and her radio is going crazy. There are other sounds coming from the forest. Just then, a blinding light shines on them, and the boys witness Haley floating away. Nick awakens in an underground, sterile facility at some point, with only a medical gown and a blanket covering his legs. A man dressed in a hazmat suit is pushing Nick about in a wheelchair. Nick is brought to an office, where he meets Dr. Damon, who is recording their conversation and taking notes, but he can only listen since he still feels lightheaded. Nick asks to call his parents, but Damon won't even tell him where he is. Instead, he says that the three of them came in contact with an alien, which is why he's wearing a hazmat suit. There's a chance they could get contaminated. Nick refuses to listen to these answers and insists on knowing the location of his friends. Damon also wants to know when Nick spotted the signal for the first time. Upon examining him, Damon discovers that Nick is suffering from a nosebleed. Later, Nick finds himself alone in his room and learns that he is paralyzed and has the numbers 2.3.5.41 engraved on his arm. The door is closed and he cannot leave until they come for him. But if he can find out the password for the keypad, he may be able to use it to escape. Nick is taken from his room by the men in the hazmat suits, so they may initiate several tests. While there, 
Nick is given the opportunity to look inside other rooms, some of which are either empty or undergoing cleanup after a violent incident. After Nick locates Haley in one of the rooms, the Damon forbid him from entering. When Nick is brought before Damon again, he requests to see Haley, but Damon says no. He then starts posing strange questions, such as whether Nick is an earthling and if he has ten toes. He also inquires about the signal that the group received. Nick assumes he is referring to Nomad, so he proceeds to tell the entire story of how he got there. Damon then plays back the video that the boys had recorded while they were exploring the house, pausing it when they reached the tree and revealing that an extraterrestrial was standing on it. It turns out that Nomad was not human at all. In his room, Nick still refuses to eat his dinner. Suddenly, he hears someone whispering his name. Through the vents connecting their rooms he realizes it is Jonah speaking to him. Not only was Jonah not given many details, he was not even allowed to visit Haley, although he did report feeling unwell. But Jonah had to end the talk quickly to avoid being found out. Nick is required to complete a basic test including shapes, colors, and numbers during his upcoming meeting with Damon. Nick soon ends it, calling them out on their treatment of him and threatening to stop cooperating unless he sees Haley. Damon leads Nick to Haley's room, but they don't go inside, and since she's unconscious, her file is empty. But Damon swears that Nick will be the first to see her when she wakes up. Nick goes back to his room with the intention of devising an escape strategy. To determine which buttons are being pressed by the staff, he begins by flinging cracker crumbs at the keypad. Additionally, he uses the vent to communicate with Jonah, and the two of them discover the facility's clock-like schedule. Jonah informs Nick that he hasn't been able to feel his arms since they gave him something strange to drink, but he sounds more and more miserable every day. One evening, employees in a different part of the building are stimulating a cow by pressing buttons to make it agitated. Abruptly, the lights go out, and the alarm suggests that there has been a breach in security. Nick tries to hide in the restroom as all of the employees rush to handle the situation, but they discover him and bring him to an office where they wait for the matter to be resolved. Nick notices burn scars on the walls of the hallway after they go. The last straw Nick needs to try to execute his plan is to lose Jonah. When the staff discovers the room unoccupied one afternoon, they discover a map Nick made of the building beneath the bed linens, on which he has written the keypad password and the timetable. Damon pretends he doesn't know what Nick is talking about, but Nick knows that he knows as there are surveillance cameras in the facility. The doctor said that Jonah had never been in the facility. When Nick goes back to his room, he can no longer hear Jonah's voice. When the workers discover the room, they discover a map Nick made of the facility beneath the bed linens, which helps him remember the keypad password and the timetable. Now that he has finally worked everything out, Nick is trying to get away by dragging Haley's bed down the hallway. He manages to go to the exit door and calculates the seconds around every corner to determine when a worker is going to pass by, only to find he can't get to the keypad. Nick tries to use his tube to punch the buttons because he still can't reach the keypad. Unfortunately, the staff members catch Nick. Nick collapses and dreams of his past glory, running marathons and spending quality time with Haley. He awakens to find himself in an area with Haley, who has also finally come to. Haley cries and tells him that she had a dream in which Nick won the national championship and they attempted to hold hands, but the workers pulled them apart. Nick loses his balance and falls to the ground, where he discovers strange marks on his hands. His real legs have been replaced with cutting-edge prosthetics, shocking him when he glances down. Nick starts to get anxious. He first looks under his clothing to make sure everything is still there. He stumbles while attempting to rise up. Damon explains to him from the other side of the one-way mirror that this is precisely the reason they kept quiet earlier. They had to wait for Nick to be prepared. Nick destroys the entire room and wraps a blanket around his legs to keep his eyes off the metal. Afterward, he kicks down the door with his newfound legs and makes another escape with Haley. Whenever an employee tries to stop him now that he can walk, he simply uses his crutch to knock them down, and he also kicks down any doors that stand in his way. After Nick and Haley successfully reach the elevator, Damon approaches Nick and informs him that it is extremely dangerous for Nick to be outside and that he can only be protected inside. Nick is curious about his words, but the elevator door closes. Shortly after, the two are making their way out of the building via a dimly lit tunnel. Haley has regained consciousness once more, and the two of them take a ride with an elderly woman. Although she seems innocent, her speech pattern is unsettling since it suggests that she may not be entirely sane. In the midst of the road, she even stops the vehicle and tells her passengers to open their mouths to listen to God's little angels. Nick requests that Haley wait for him in a truck while he goes inside to make a phone call after the woman drops the teenagers off at a diner by the road. Nick walks in and, fortunately, no one remarks on his outfit. However, the phone doesn't work, 
so there's no need to try to use it. Suddenly, Nick hears Haley leaving in the truck outside. Nick rushes after the truck in desperation, reaching the window, but the driver hits him with the door to eject him. Nick simply uses his newly acquired legs to easily catch up to the driver, and he starts running at a very high speed. The driver does not have enough time to think when Haley points a gun to him. After getting back together, the couple abandons the driver beside the road and flees using the truck. Damon and his guys are searching for the two as well. The elderly woman is the first person they encounter, and they take her into the facility to question her. But as the woman just keeps talking gibberish, Damon uses a revolver to put a stop to her misery. Returning to the two, they find that the path they chose leads nowhere. They take a different route and turn the truck around, but they get the impression that they are traveling in circles and passing through the same area. They eventually make the decision to pause at a house in order to search for clues, but all of the documentation is about nature, and phones aren't functional here either. The only map they discover is an enormous diorama that defies logic because it doesn't correspond with the routes they were recently on. Nick determines they will spend the night there since Haley continues to exhibit symptoms of illness. The pair decides to hide by running further into the building, making it harder for Damon and his men harder to locate them. When they see someone wearing a hazmat suit, they become alarmed, but it turns out that this person is Jonah, who had really been inside the facility and had fled by donning the suit in order to avoid detection. At the same time, Damon visits the truck driver who is also talking gibberish like the old woman. Damon also sends the guy to heaven. He then returns the goldfish to its bowl and leaves. As Haley drifts off to sleep, Nick notices that she has some sort of spinal implant. According to Jonah, the fact that the numbers on their tattoos total up to 51 indicates that he believes they are in Area 51. He further points out that the three of them are being used for experiments because nothing about this place makes sense. The routes are confusing, and the people here act strangely. The only route available to them is through a military checkpoint, so the three of them deliberately drive up to it. Jonah attempts to pose as a worker by donning the hazmat suit, but the military still suspects them and traps the vehicle. Jonah knocks a soldier down with the truck door right away, seizes his weapon, and uses it to push the other troops off him and into the closest building. Jonah attempts to use a computer there to reveal what is happening, but his big metal fingers are unable to reach the keys. Just then, a soldier throws a grenade. Nick then promptly sets out to find his friend. When a soldier shoots Jonah, Nick rushes to his aid, but a beaten Jonah gives Nick his final instructions to go with Haley while he hold them off. Jonah uses his new prosthetic limbs to start demolishing everything in his path, including the road itself. Shortly after, when Nick and Haley are ready to cross the only bridge that can bring them over the canyon, Damon and his men block the road, shooting at the tires and causing the truck to crash. Before Nick collapses to the ground, he starts having additional memories of his former life. It is then that Haley shows him that she still has the necklace and gives it to him while expressing her love. After Haley is taken away by the facility staff, Damon comes up to Nick and declares that he is their greatest creation, the ideal synthesis of human and extraterrestrial technology. As Nick turns to face him, it finally dawns on him that Damon is actually Nomad, the hacker they have been conversing with all along. Damon attests to this and reminds Nick that he was the one who initially approached the hacker. Nick, filled with rage and grief, eventually becomes so angry that he uses all of his leg strength. He crosses the bridge in a matter of seconds and slams into an unseen wall while running at breakneck speed. Nick soon learns that he has been in space all along. Everything has always been a part of a simulation, and Damon is an android from another planet. In reality, they are on an extraterrestrial spacecraft with the same number as Nick's tattoo, 23,541, that is set to land on an odd extraterrestrial planet. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this movie. See you in our next video.